Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Let me know if the sound is coming through okay. Hello, teacher. Good morning. It's okay, teacher. Morning, teacher. Morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone had a long, extended weekend. Since we had no class yesterday, I totally forgot we didn't have class yesterday. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. Got everything planned, ready to go. So that, oh man, we don't have class today. I actually had to ask my boys, do you, do you guys have class today? It was like an out of body ex, uh, experience. Really, really weird. But we're here today. That's the good thing. And today, what I'd like to do, something totally different. It's something that. I really feel strongly about uh, for all the students throughout the BA. And so today I want to talk about an ePortfolio. I want to do an activity this week to introduce you to an ePortfolio. If you've never thought about it before, if you've never had an ePortfolio, what is it? What's it for? What's the purpose? And today I want to explain why I think it's really important for any professionals, but especially teachers, those of you who are uh, going through the BA to be a teacher or any other profession. I th we think that uh, having an e-portfolio is really important. Before we get into that, though, I would like to remind everyone that we have a website. If you want to see the activities that, that we've done, the recent activities, but basically all the activities that we've done, you can go to this link. And I think I've shared this link before, but I'll post it again in the chat. But you might want to save this. You might want to bookmark it in your favorite browser. But here we have two views. We have the calendar view. So if I go back, this is November, we're just starting a new month, so there's not a lot there. But if I go back to October, you'll see a lot of activity. Basically, everything we've done is pretty much here. Okay, especially for the last two weeks is where we got into a little bit more detail. But you can click on in any of these spaces here and get more information about the activity that we did. And you, you can also find the recordings for each of the classes that we've had as well. If you select uh, class, actually I started calling it listening and speaking or LNS, but this is where you can find the recordings from past classes. The view right underneath the calendar, the assignments list, this is really important because this lists all of the assignments, all of the activities that you did where you received a grade, you can find those and you can find the dates along the right hand side of this, your screen. So if this helps, use this page. It's not required, but I want to make it available so that if you're uh, needing to find an activity or some information about something that we did in class, then this might be helpful. All right. so. The performance task, I would like everyone to take a look. Let me save this link. I'll share this also in the chat. I really enjoyed the performance task. I was going through and leaving feedback and wanted to touch on just a couple of, just make a few comments on what I saw. Uh, I did leave a video feedback underneath each of your videos. There were a few teams that I could not access your file. Okay, so I think in most cases, I don't know if the file's too big. I just, I don't know what the problem is. But when I try to download, I can't open it and I can't, uh, I can't see it. So if, uh, let's see, this looks like team two. I had a problem with team two and I think team 11 and team 13, I, I couldn't find your video. Okay, so please check that. If you guys can find a way to maybe create a file that's maybe not so big, I don't know if that's the problem, 
because it looks like the videos that I had problems with were rather large. But again, I don't know. Even though I can see the video, in some cases I can see the video in, micro in uh, Microsoft Teams, I am trying to be able to download the file. So if you can take a look at that, those teams that have not received feedback, um, you still can do it. You'll still get credit. I'll still provide you feedback. But I'm going to ask those teams to please check again and see if you can maybe create the video either either in a different file format or, again, I'm not really sure what the problem is. I'm just, I just know that I'm not able to open it. But without going into a lot of detail, first of all, great work. I really enjoyed watching these videos. Um, I really liked where you guys were having conversations, okay? Because that was one of the things I really wanted to stress with this activity is to create some sort of cooking show where you're creating a conversation around the the food itself. And of course, you could bring in culture and, and celebrities, but it really was about trying to offer this cooking show and build something around that, right? And uh, a couple of things that stood out, Team One stood out, uh, the dialogue um, between Mirna and um, uh, Fernando was really was really good. Uh, the, the the back and forth showing the food to the camera was really dynamic. Even though the the camera sometimes the video quality is not the best, I would much prefer to see a video than a still only a still image. Like to be able to see you guys interact and and discuss with your facial expressions and so on is is always is always good. Team three, really good job dressing up, a lot of visuals, a lot of good imagery, good uh, dialogue, right? Team four as well. Everybody really did a good job um, presenting. And uh, again, being able to see the back and forth, team seven really did a good job uh, having a, a very casual conversation, right? Nothing was written out. It was just off the cuff creating the language, right? Creating the ideas. Um, I think Team 12 really knocked it out of the park, though, man. When I saw how they dressed up, a lot of good image, images, great transitions from one idea to the next, and when they were shifting from one person to another person, great transitions. I liked how they got into the kitchen and were they were cooking inside the kitchen and actually showing how to make the dish and how they integrated and tied culture, the food, the celebrities all together. Uh, really, really awesome job there. Okay, so if you haven't had a chance, I'd highly recommend that you guys watch all of the other videos if you haven't already. Um, and uh, for those who still need to upload. You still may do so. I'll still change your grade. I'll still provide you feedback, but please try to do that today. And if you guys have any technical issues or problems, uh, just uh, send me a message and we can try to meet outside of class and discuss your situation. All right. Today, I'd like to talk about ePortfolios. Now, ePortfolios, um, in the BA, all right, I don't know how, how many of you have seen the Plan de Studios. This is kind of a simple, simplified version of the courses that you're going to take throughout the BA. This is at the bottom, actually. So here we have all eight semesters of the BA, including Prope, which is the courses that you're taking currently. Okay, so here we have just some general information about the BA. But I wanted to jump in a little bit deeper into the BA because this relates to why I think ePortfolios are really important. So let me go into 
And I want to show you, I'm not going to obviously sh show you the whole plan of studios, but what I want to show you is on page 42, and this is the map. This is the curriculum map. So here, this is a different way of looking at all the courses that you're going to take. And I like this map because it breaks down all of the courses into strands, into categories, into types or groups of courses that you're going to take. So for example, here at the very top, we have uh, the integration of the skills. This is primarily for Prope, of course. Um, we have here the development, skills development strand. And in this strand, you're going to take next semester, or not next semester, next year, you're going to take uh, HSAE. This is a skills development where you're going to practice all the four skills. You're going to take... Um, you're going to take an advanced reading class. You're going to take a writing workshop. You're going to take a, a public speaking workshop. And you're going to take an academic writing course. All of these courses are designed to help you develop even further your English skills. Right? Our focus this first year in Prope is to emerge you into the language and in addition to the routines that you develop outside of class that also support your own development, you want to get the most out of this first year. But notice throughout the BA, you will continue to have courses that are designed to help you improve even further your English, right? Because we want to have the highest English po possible when we graduate from the BA. So this is one strand, okay? This is one category or type of courses that you're going to take in the BA. The next strand here, the applied linguistics, okay? So applied linguistics is simply how do, how do people learn languages? So you're going to take courses to help you understand how people learn languages, the, the theory behind it and the practice behind it. All right, so this is going to include uh, linguistic classes like uh, phonology, phonetics. You'll have a linguistic course, social, uh, social linguistics. You'll have an analytic grammar course, a literature course, psycholinguistics, discourse analysis, and applied linguistics. All of these courses are designed under the strand of applied linguistics, which, which simply means how do people learn languages, right? And so as a teacher, we need to know how do people learn additional languages. The next category of courses that you're going to take, and you'll see here we've got a lot of them, these are methodology courses. These are teaching methodology courses. This is also theoretical, but it's more pedagogical, all right? It's more related to being a teacher and knowing techniques and strategies and materials and approaches, methods. And you're going to learn about how those theoretical concepts, right, relate to the teaching and learning of English. And so, as you see here, a lot of courses, a lot of courses that you're going to take, all designed under this one strand of teaching methodology. All right, the last strand here at the very bottom is the practicum strand, okay? So from the very first semester, if you notice along the top, this is the first semester, second semester, all the way down to the eighth semester. So you notice from the first semester, you're going to be taking courses that relate to the practicum. That is the, the actual teaching the actual practice of teaching someone else English as an additional language. All right, so all of these courses are designed from the very first semester to get you experience, as much, ex uh, as, as much experience as possible being a teacher, actually being out there in front of a group and, and teaching other, uh, other learners. Okay, so... This is kind of a bird's eye view. This is kind of a different way of looking at all the courses that you're going to be taking in this BA. 
Again, this is going to start next year. Okay, you're going to have one full year. You'll have Prope 1, Prope 2 and next semester. And then the following year, um, you'll begin the first semester of the BA, okay, which will again include all of these courses here. All right. Now, why do I bring this up? Why is this important? And how does this relate to e portfolios? Well, an e portfolio is, is going to be your own personal and professional online space for you to share things that you know, things that you can do, and it probably is going to reflect in great part your values, right? Your, um, your attitude, your disposition as a, as a, as a uh, professional. All right. So your knowledge, your skills, and your attitudes, your disposition. But when you think about creating a space, right, like some online space with that in mind, there's a lot of different ways to organize the way in which you create an e-portfolio. And the reason I share this map with you is I'd like for you to kind of jot down these strands. Okay, so again, we have the English practicum. And you can write this for now in English or Spanish, but this is, I'm going to, I'll speak in English. You'll notice you're reading it here in Spanish. But you've got the teaching practicum. You've got teaching methodology. You have applied linguistics. And you have skills development, right? I would just simplify that and call it skills development. Skills development being reading, writing, listening, and speaking, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, all of those things. All right, so those are the, the main strands. One, two, three, four main strands, okay? Now, those strands, all right, I'm going to open up another file here. Those strands could be the way in which you order or you organize your ePortfolio. So I'm going to open up this presentation, and all of this uh, this presentation you can access later. And this has a lot of information. I'm not going to talk about all of it, but I want to share with you parts of this presentation that I think are important. And I want you to think about how you can organize from the very beginning your ePortfolio. Your ePortfolio. Think of your ePortfolio, first of all, as your own space, right, for the work that you do throughout the, the, the major, okay? It's, this is not just an assignment for this class, for Prope. This is a space that you're going to continue to develop and contribute to throughout your, uh, throughout your college experience, right, throughout your learning experience and probably something you continue on, hopefully, even when you become a professional. But think of this ePortfolio as a way to organize things that you can share with others that show your knowledge, your skills, and your values, your attitudes. All right, so I've included here in this presentation, we have a standard one skill development. All right, so this just so happens to be taken from the BA, as we have all those classes that relate to skills development. And I would include prope classes, all of prope classes, um, maybe with the exception of the culture class, that falls under the skills development, because in fact, that's what you're doing. When you're in our class, you're working on listening and speaking, you're working on your writing class with other teachers, right? You're reading and so on. You're developing those English skills. So I would also include your courses in Prope also in this in this one area. All right, the next, okay, let me go back here. So standard one is speaking and writing. Now, when you're sharing things that you can do, right, you're probably going to be focusing more on speaking and writing because those are the productive skills. Those are things that you can see. It's hard to show what you can read, 
right? Without showing something that you can, maybe you're explaining a book, right? But you have to either speak or write in order to communicate um, and relate the other skills, right? So reading and listening are the receptive skills. Those are a little bit harder to like demonstrate, obviously, because again, those are receptive skills. Okay, so you can think in terms of speaking and writing. So imagine your e-portfolio as you're contributing, you have a good balance between showing uh, your, your speaking skills and showing your writing skills. The second standard, applied linguistics. Okay, so this is taken from our BA. So all of those courses uh, and anything that you want to share with regard to applied linguistics, then you can create a space for that. Now, because you're still in prope, of course, you're not going to have anything in applied linguistics, okay? But it's not too early to begin thinking about, well, how can I start to organize my e-portfolio, thinking, keeping in mind that eventually, next year, I'm going to be having other types of of what we call artifacts, right, or products that I want to include in the ePortfolio. All right, so these are some just examples. And everything that I'm sharing here is just uh, an example, a way for you to start thinking about how you can um, organize your ePortfolio. Okay, the, the third standard, teaching methodology. Again, this is coming from the plan de studios, right? The curriculum, right? So you can think about, well, how could I divide up and organize my information there? Standard four, teaching practicum, okay? So these are different ways and different sections that you might create either now or later on in your e-portfolio, right? So that you can use the same portfolio throughout your BA. Right, they're, you're going to have some classes where they're going to require some sort of portfolio. And these are going to be really good opportunities for you to include in your own, per, your own personal portfolio this same information. And maybe even your teacher will accept your e-portfolio as part of that assignment. But there might be some other cases where maybe the class doesn't require an e-portfolio, but you want to include some of your work in that e-portfolio. And that's what I want you to start to think about is, all right, what can I show and include in my e-portfolio, right? That again, will demonstrate my knowledge, my skills and my disposition. Okay. That's really how we evaluate each other. When you're going on a job interview and you want to work at a school, and you sit down and you're having a conversation, that's what they're looking for. They want to know, well, what do you know? What can you do? And what kind of person are you? Are you do you have a nice personality, a professional uh, personality? Do you have a good disposition? Are you willing to you know, work certain hours or whatever? They're looking for those three things. So if your e-portfolio e can include those three things, then that's going to complement your resume. You're still going to have a resume to show a piece of paper that says, okay, or something like electronic that's going to have, you know, information about yourself, but an e-portfolio is going to complement that. All right. So I don't want you to just think, oh, well, we're talking four years from now. This is a long way from now. No, you're starting now to build this space to begin contributing to this space. And if you get into the habit of developing this throughout, um, it's our belief that you're going to have a very good product. You're going to have an e-portfolio, a very professional one that is going to uh, help you get the best job that you, that you can. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before I show you some examples of some websites and give you some time in class to start creating your own e-portfolio is what to include specifically right now, today, or this week into your own e-portfolio. This is a good list here. The, the page I have up 
Um, and I'm going to use again the, the term artifacts. Okay, when I use the word artifacts, artifacts simply means they could be a, a, a Word document, they could be an Excel spreadsheet, they could be an audio recording, they could be a video recording, they could be just a, a certificate, they could be anything. An artifact is could be any of those things. All right, so when you're thinking about what you could include in your ePortfolio, here's a list. Now, you don't have to include all of these. These are just to give you some ideas about possible things that you could include. Artifacts related to knowledge of the subject matter. So imagine if you're something, if you know something about culture that you learn and you want to share that, or you did some sort of activity that demonstrates your knowledge of cultural awareness, and you want to include that in your ePortfolio, I think that would be great. That's a that's a that's a good option. Artifacts that relate to human development or learning. Okay, this could be simply your own reflection as you're talking about how you developed, how you grew from doing some certain activity. Uh, adapting instruction for individual needs. Now, this might be something more appropriate for later on when you get into the BA and the practicum classes and you're really proud of a class that you did and you want to share that you want to reflect on that maybe it, it didn't even go that great but you learned something from it and you want to share that in your e-portfolio those are good examples multiple instructional strategies classroom motivational skills here we go speaking skills this one really relates to us artifacts related to speaking skills we probably have one although i don't see it for artifacts related to the writing skills right if you're uh, want to show off some of your writing skills then that would be also i'm right, sorry here various types of writing right so uh, these are uh, these are artifacts or types of artifacts that really relate to the courses that you're currently teaching now audio tapes of oral readings student self-reflections we'll talk about that in a minute uh, entries in personal and professional journal. Maybe it's an actual journal where you're actually writing to yourself on a periodic basis. Okay, if anyone is uh, into journaling, that's a really good way of reflecting not on a continual basis on what you're doing. Uh, monthly reading records and so on. So many different types of examples here that I wanted to provide in this presentation. And you can use this if you need to, or maybe come back to it later. But for, for our purposes for this week, okay, for this week, what I'd like for us to do is to begin creating a, an e-portfolio. And I'm going to give you four examples, four services that I think are good options. They're not the only options. And if you have other options that you want to use, then that's fine. The only thing that, I'm, that I ask is that the services that you use, make sure that they've been around for a while. The four examples that I'm going to share with you today have been around for a while. And uh, I don't think there's uh, much of a chance that they're going to go away anytime soon. I guess anything is possible, but... Um, you know, make sure that you're checking and checking the company and, and that they've been around for a while. The first example I want to share with you here is Google Sites. Google's been around for a while and they're probably going to be here for some time to come. So they have uh, Google Sites, which is just within their ecosystem. And, you know, you can bring in all of the, uh, the YouTubes and the Google Docs and all of that as you wish. And it's fairly straightforward. Um, but here, Google Sites, sites.google.com. And uh, they have a new site. This is actually not all that new, but they, they actually had an older version of Google Sites. Uh, but this is much better, more intuitive, I think more uh, user-friendly. So this is one option. 
Okay, so you could choose Google Sites to host your ePortfolio. Another option is WordPress.com. All of these options are free, by the way. Okay, so obviously you don't have to pay for any of these services. Some do uh, offer a premium that you could pay, but you don't have to. And certainly for our purposes, you don't have to pay uh, for any of these that uh, for the purposes of what we're doing. But WordPress.com is another free service, and it's been around for a long time, and it's free, and so you might want to consider that. Okay, so make sure that if you're interested in using WordPress, it's WordPress.com, not WordPress.org. Okay, so you want WordPress.com. You can create an account, create your own website free of charge. Weebly. Weebly is, um, is a good site. It's very intuitive. Uh, you can create pages. You're actually looking at my dashboard on, of a page that I created some time ago. Uh, but it's all click and drag. And it's really quite easy to organize the pages however you wish. And, um, you know, create the menu systems that you want. They have a lot of formats that you can... Uh, or templates or themes they call them that you can use right to change the colors and the formats Weebly is a really good option and Wix now it's interesting when I give this presentation to learners uh, of these four most students choose Wix now Wix for me personally is the most complicated. It's probably, maybe it's the best in the sense that you can do a lot of things with it, but it's not as user friendly. It's not as easy to use as Weebly or Google Sites or WordPress. All right, so in my personal opinion, I would say that these first three are a little bit easier to use, but Wix is really popular. Again, almost, I would say 95% of my students use Wix to create their, their e-portfolio. But it's up to you, okay? So I wanted to share with you Google Sites, WordPress.com, Weebly, and Wix, all right, as options. And again, if you have another service, uh, or if you even have one, maybe you have a portfolio already set up and you want to use that space, that's fine. But it needs to be a public space. It needs to be a space where anyone can see it because this is precisely the point. All right. You don't have to share everything, but you can share things that you feel that were a learning experience for you. And it might even be something that you completed that you, that you don't feel you actually did the best on but that you but you really learned a lot then you could include that along with a reflection to show exactly what what it was that you learned all right so here are some websites here that you can take a look at and i'll say one more thing here before we break uh into well we're not going to break into groups we're going to go individually and look for uh, to developing our own e-portfolio. Um, the, the last thing I'll say about the e-portfolio, the space that I'm asking you to create is a personal, professional, online space. So try to keep this in mind, and I, I want you to personalize it, but I want it to remain uh, professional. What I mean pro professional is... Um, I would suggest if you're going to upload any um, images or any visuals to your space, and I encourage you to do so, that you make sure that um, that it's related to the profession, right? Think of it like this. If you were going to go in a job interview tomorrow and you wanted to show this e-portfolio, would you want to share a space, an e-portfolio with you know, some pictures of going out to a party or, uh, you know, doing some wild things um, when maybe that's not the best place to do it. So things like even hobbies, right? 
For right now, I would hold off on including any information about hobbies or personal information. Keep it professional in in terms of writing, speaking, and you can talk about uh, the other skills, uh, any activities that you did that that even in write in reading class, if you did a, an activity that was uh, you know, that you thought was really, uh, that you got a lot out of, that you learned something from, then you can include that artifact in your ePortfolio. But what I'd like for us to do this week is to create the space, and I'm going to ask that you include at least two artifacts from from other classes, not from listening, speaking, but from any of your other classes. And along with the artifact, I would like for you to include a reflection about the artifact. All right now this, the artifact, the reflection is going to be something that you're, that you speak. You're going to create a, a video, right? Or you could do a, uh, you could share your screen if we're looking at the artifact. Right. The the easiest example. Let's say that you're you have a writing assignment. Maybe you wrote a paragraph that you're really proud of, or that you learned something from. You could show the paragraph and describe, reflect on the experience of developing the paragraph. And I've included some uh, questions here as a guide for you to think about when you're thinking about what to say in a reflection. What could I say about this reflection? Well, why did I choose this artifact? Why did I choose this particular paragraph? Uh, in what aspects did I improve my own English proficiency development? How did I grow by completing this? Uh, what about the experience creating an artifact did you find challenging, right? Maybe this was a really difficult paragraph to write, and I might even still have questions about certain aspects of it, but maybe some part of your writing was clarified. Maybe you learned something in that you figured out maybe uh, some gra grammatical aspect or something. How did you prepare and create the artifact? When did you complete the artifact? Right? In what class did you complete the artifact? What was the purpose of completing the artifact? These are some questions that you can think about in, in that reflection. Okay? That's kind of down the road for this week. right? This is what, what we're going to do later this week. But today what I'd like for us to do is to begin looking online, either looking at Google Sites, WordPress.com, Weebly or Wix to get started. And I want to take today to do this, to allow time for questions. If you guys have some technical issues that we can look at if we need to, or if you want some uh, advice about how to uh, start up your ePortfolio, I want to dedicate time today to do that. Um, and give you this time in class to get set up, right? Our goal for today is to at least have our space developed and you can begin completing the ePortfolio. Maybe include your name. Don't include, and this is very important, a lot of things not to include, okay, in your ePortfolio. Don't include personal information other than your name, all right? Don't include your... Uh, your cell phone number, don't include your address, um, just include information that you feel comfortable sharing. All right, that's the first thing. The second, don't share any, um, any music. All right, don't share any music unless you know that it's under a Creative Commons license. And these are things that we can talk about. I can help you find music and images to include in your ePortfolio. All right, and some of your ePortfolios, for example, in Wix and in Weebly, they may give you some examples of images, and you're going to want to remove all of those, right? You can use the template, but you're going to need to remove any images that are 
uh, that that were included in the uh, template. Okay, these are things that we can talk about today, but I want you to be really careful about the music and the images that you include. You can include personal pictures, of course, if uh, of yourself. Any pictures that you take, you can include in your uh, in your ePortfolio. I would suggest not including pictures of other people unless you have their permission. Okay, unless you have their permission to do so. I would uh, just keep it simple. Um, images, like if you're taking, you know, pictures of trees or flowers or something and you want to bring that in, or if you find images online, that's fine also. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, are there any, I've been talking about a lot of different things here from the, the BA program to uh, the ePortfolio. Are there any questions based on what we've talked about here so far with the, the BA or, or the ePortfolio? I no. think that's clear. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start. Um, let's go ahead and start looking for our ePortfolios. And I'm going to ask you guys to share your links to your ePortfolios. And you all should be able to add comments to this page. Did I share this link with you? No, I didn't. All right, so I just shared with you a, another link, a third link. This is a link to our ePortfolio page. And I'm going to ask everyone to share. When you have your public link, to share your public link, try to share it here in this comment section in this page. Everyone should have the right to, to make a comment. Okay, so you can just leave your comment. You can just uh, copy and paste the URL to your new ePortfolio to this space. And then, because I, what I want to do is I want to create links to all of your ePortfolios here at the bottom. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and break up into our, our well, individually and go online and start looking at ePortfolios. And I totally expect uh, some questions as you guys are getting into these spaces. So please come back and ask your questions, or I'll be checking also the, the uh, chat. All right, it's uh, 940. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and close for today. Uh, double check your links. I was able to open up uh, Jazz's um, ePortfolio. The Weeblies, uh, make sure that you're sharing the public URL. So make sure that it's not, not a copy and paste of the URL when you're inside the dashboard. There should be a public page. In fact, when you in Weebly, you'll have an option to publish. Let me open up my Weebly here. And... The top right hand corner of your screen you have this button here to publish and then uh mine's not doing it because i don't have it activated but when you hit this publish button there should be a link that pops up that takes you to the url there might be another way to to get it mm, let's see it might be on this first page as well are you sharing are you sharing your screen? Ah, I thought I was. I'm not. Sorry. All right. So now you should be able to see my screen. When you go into Weebly, at the top right hand corner of your screen, you should have a publish button. When you click on this publish button, there should be a pop-up menu that should show your public URL. This is the the URL or the link that the rest of the world will access to see your ePortfolio. If you if you um, if you're in your dashboard and you copy and paste this link up here, it's not going to work because again, you're inside your dashboard. 
So this should be a public URL. So double check that. Um, again, I was able to see. Uh, I think uh, Jazz's was okay. So I opened that up. That's fine. But the uh, Weebly sites, uh, I'm not able to open up. Let's see. Same way, uh, Jackie, double check your your link. And uh, Monica, double check your link. It looks yeah, you you I think you copied and pasted the incorrect uh, link. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let's see here. All right, I think I'm going to hide these, or if you guys want to remove the ones that are not good, if the links aren't working, you can check this yourself by signing out of your Weebly account or whatever account your service that you're using. Go ahead and sign out and use that same link to see if you can get in, and that will be a good uh, test. Or you could have a friend do the same thing. All right, so for, uh, for next class, try to share your public link to your ePortfolio. We'll talk more about it this week. Tomorrow I want to start uh, preparing us for our first debate. We're going to be focusing on doing a debate uh, regarding games and technology this week. Okay, so that's what we'll be focusing on starting tomorrow. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Hope you guys have a good day today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you. Thank you, Thank you teacher. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You too. Uh, you too.